Welcome back to The Independence. Fox News has confirmed the Obama administration is debating whether to kill an American citizen. They say has joined al-Qaeda and is actively targeting Americans for attacks. Judge Andrew Napolitano joins us to weigh in on the legality of such a strike. Welcome, Judge. Uh, good to be here, Kennedy. So this is, I mean, it's, it's scary, of course, the thought that there's some guy who's gone rogue, joined al-Qaeda, and wants to kill Americans. That's a horrible thought. But isn't there still something special about being an American citizen that they can't just kill you with drones? Well, there's, there's, there's two areas that are, are obstacles to the president's self-proclaimed power that he can kill. And, and just by a little bit of background. The president, in a speech at uh, the University of Notre Dame, and uh, Attorney General Holder, in a speech a year before at Northwestern University Law School, actually claimed that the due process requirements of the Fifth Amendment could be met in secret by the careful deliberation by the president and other high-ranking American officials when they decide who to kill. Due process, of course, is a fancy legal phrase for if the government wants your life, your liberty, or your property, it has to... Um, proceed against you in a courtroom before a neutral judge and a neutral jury and explain what you did wrong and convict you or win a lawsuit. Okay, now I want to I read this quote. This is from the speech you're talking about. The president said in May, last May, when a U.S. citizen goes abroad to wage war against America and is actively plotting to kill U.S. citizens, and when neither the United States nor our partners are in a position to capture him before he carries out a plot, his citizenship should no more serve as a shield than a sniper shooting down on an innocent crowd should be protected from the swat. Team. Well, you, you know, What's wrong with the, the catalog of things that the president says this, is guy, this guy is doing. He's a bad guy with evil intent, plotting with our enemies. He's lethal. Uh, his lethality is imminent, and we can't arrest him. Where did he come up with those? He made them up himself. There is no statute enacted by the Congress that says if somebody meets all these criteria, the president can kill him. Such a statute would be lawful because Congress enacted it, but profoundly unconstitutional because it, too, would violate the Due Process Clause, which says you can't just kill people. Kings claimed they could kill people, particularly a king against whose soldiers we fought for our freedom, George III of Great Britain, which is the reason we have this Fifth Amendment, precisely to prevent the president from doing what he's trying to do here. Well, Judge, the, the president keeps alluding to these new stricter guidelines that are that are uh, uh, informing the policy of drone strikes and whether or not to carry out a drone strike. It sounds like he's agonizing over it, but I cannot find anything documented that says this is the policy, this is what well, the administration has to do. Camille, that's it is his imagination. The president made these guidelines up himself and refused by dispatching lawyers, uh, Justice Department lawyers, into federal courtrooms to uh, articulate the legal basis for these. That's because there is no legal basis. This is basically Barack Obama writing rules to govern Barack Obama's decision to kill people. Look, there's another clause of the Constitution here which is very uh, troubling uh, to the president. And this particularly addresses Americans. It is not possible for a non-American to commit treason. Treason only pertains to American citizens. But treason in the Constitution for an American is defined, it's the only crime that's defined in the Constitution, so this can't be changed by the Congress, as waging war against the United States or providing aid and comfort to enemies of the United States. So even if this guy, let's say he's in Yemen, that they're talking about, we don't know where he is and we don't know who he is, we don't even know if it's a he or if it's one person or more, is waging war against the United States, guess what? The Constitution guarantees him a jury trial and requires the government to have at least two witnesses to the same overt act. Again, those requirements are there to prevent the president from doing what kings did when they dispatched their, their political adversaries to the gallows for treason. Judge, so this is a guy who is uh, in a, rom a remote location. He's someone we can't get to as a result. He's well guarded, which means it's going to be really hard to capture him. And the administration says that not only has he planned and uh, assisted with attacks on Americans, that he's continuing to do so. So my question is, given these constitutional impediments, what should the administration be doing? How do you handle someone who is a potential, who, if they believe he is a real threat, how do you handle someone? Here, here's why by the uh, premise that the government wants us to put in a, a question as articulate of yours doesn't make any sense. If the government can get to Osama bin Laden, they can get to anybody. Now, I spoke with an author, Jeremy Scahill, you guys know him, yep. 
who um, spoke with a member of the team that uh, killed Alaki. He's the American who's killed by a drone. They followed him for 48 hours. They were within less than a half a mile of him the entire 48 hours. There were 12 of them on that team. Any 12 could have captured him alive. They didn't want to capture him. The president didn't want to capture him. He wanted to demonstrate that he could kill. So does, does killing justify, does the Constitution permit killing no matter how dangerous the person is? Absolutely not. It, do we really believe that the government can't capture whoever it wants? They can capture bin Laden. They can capture this guy. All right. Very good. Thank you very much, Judge Pleasure.